1961, Brazil. A 40-year-old educator starts working with poor sugarcane workers. Illiterate, hence they couldn't vote. They were disempowered, disenfranchised, and excluded. But within 45 days, they had learnt to read and write, not just reading words on a page, but able to read their world, interact with their world, and create some kind of change. They had discovered a measure of power, and the educator, Paulo Freire, went on to write more than 70 publications. 1983, a young Barack Obama starts work as a community organiser in South Chicago. He listens to, commun to community and personal real concerns. He sees how communities and, and individuals can challenge power, and he learns organizing skills, skills that will one day help him become US president. He learned those skills in an organization that was established by Saul Alinsky, the grandfather of community organizing, whose ideas and high-stake confrontations became the staple diet of Western activists and so social workers. Today, Nasisa Madinga lives in Havelock, South Africa. She is a community leader, and she and others in her community are tired of the conditions in their community. So they decide to mobilize. They map every single person and household in Havelock and use that as a tool to lobby local government. They've been promised more toilets, a rearrangement of shacks, and space for children to play. What ties together Nasisa Madinga's ideas and actions with the dense educational philosophy of Paulo Freire and the ideas and confrontation of Saul Alinsky that so inspired Obama. That's the driving question of my PhD. I want to imagine Freire and Alinsky going to Havelock. What would each person share of what they'd learnt about communities and change and challenging power? What might they learn from each other? Where might they agree, disagree? And what might others also learn from them? But are they out of date, irrelevant for post-colonial Africa and a neoliberal world? I don't think so, because there's still so many communities struggling with this amount of change and control. There's a gap between the have-locks who are creating change and the have-nots, those communities that are still struggling to create their own change. Now, I'm not expecting to find a grand unified theory. There'll be no seven habits of highly effective community organizers, but there will be stories, narratives of change that can inspire and help others also get the courage to act and to have some impact on their world. I believe that's a learning that the world desperately needs.